Greetings, my name is Peter Alexander. I'm going to quickly run you through a creation process featuring Jack Nicholson as the subject. It's actually a photo of a wax figure of his likeness. Some of this video is time-lapsed. The actual recording is approximately an hour and 20 minutes. If you need to slow down an aspect of the video, YouTube has features that will accommodate this. My main goal is to show you how you can combine Headshot with the latest Skin Gen plugin. I'm also going to try to turn Jack into a caricature. Skin Gen is a phenomenal tool. I'm still learning how to use it effectively. Here I'm just getting a basic projection of Jack's face by matching the expression to the photo. This enables the projection to align better with the mouth. Here I'm using the Sculpt Morph tools of Headshot to block out some of Jack's features. Headshot is adept to an extent at extrapolating facial features from a photo. However, in 9 out of 10 times you'll need to refine them using the sculpting tools. In this case, it guessed the wrong position of Jack's chin. This is easily fixed using Headshot's tools. Mostly I'm using the Sculpt Morph tools to better align the geometry for a clean projection. For me this usually takes several attempts. There's a bit of shadow around the edge of the mouth. I can fix this in a number of ways. You can use a photo editing tool to manipulate the projection texture, or you can try to edit the black and white mask. Editing the mask will block out some of the projection texture, allowing the underlying diffuse map to take over. Often this will work well, but some projections can be tricky. 
The image editing software I'm using is called Affinity Photo and is my current alternative to Photoshop. If you find that your source projection is a bit off in color or tone values, you can try to adjust the diffuse color manually for a better result. Often I'll use the D-Light mask to see how much of the projection is blocked out and if I can work with it. Here I opt not to use it. You can see under the full skin settings there are numerous presets such as overweight, old, skinny. This will apply several presets at once without changing the skin base. The skin base in this instance is the headshot projection. Due to the amount of resources and data skin gen loads, this can take several seconds. At first glance, this is not what I'm after, but I can toggle, lower the opacity, or delete anything I don't want. Basically, I'm just going through the list of layers to see which effects I'm interested in playing with. If the effect is promising but is too strong, I'll experiment with dialing it down. Each layer effect has many options which you can play with. Most options will at some point have a masking layer, which is the black and white icon. The bluish icon represents a normal map. Normal maps are used to represent higher resolution details without the subdivisions required to actually deform the geometry. Details like muscles, sinews, wrinkles, and skin folds are achievable with little effort using this plugin. Eyebrows are added through the makeup section. The eyebrows don't align to where I want, but Skinjin has a number of warping sliders that can fix that.
If you have an underlying headshot project as your skin base, you'll probably want to add eyebrows over top of your projected ones. The eyebrow distortion features are very useful for this process. Often I will add a face decal, drag it to the bottom of the head layers, and just lower the opacity so that it retains just enough of the person, while knocking out some of the flaws of the headshot projection. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just fiddling with the settings, seeing what works and what doesn't. At this point, I figured Jack needs some hair. Unfortunately, at this point, I start to realize that I don't have any suitable hair. So, I decided to change my strategy and go for the longer hair that Jack had in The Shining. This also gives me a direction for the caricature. I'm switching to ZBrush to more easily edit this hairstyle. If you make a lot of changes to the character, you should choose Gauze All. This will allow you to adjust the character rig to fit any changes you've made. It's not necessary for this hair change, but I thought I'd mention it. You can use the Edit Mesh function to push around the geometry further. The benefit is that you get to see your edits with the texture. The downside is that these options are nowhere near as advanced or usable as ZBrush.
Jack develops beard stubble in The Shining as he descends into madness, so back to Skin Gen. Jack is also much younger at this point, so I'll remove the double chin. At this point, I'm going to try to turn him into a caricature by exaggerating certain key features. The Edit Mesh tool gives you a degree of geometry manipulation. Technically, if you were patient, you could sculpt everything with this function. I've created several advanced characters without leaving Character Creator.
I'm fairly satisfied with him. I'm just going to add a backdrop by dragging an image into Character Creator with my right mouse button. Alternatively, you can add an image as a background using the project settings. After my initial recording, I went back and did another pass of this project and came up with this version. I highly recommend Character Creator Headshot in the new Skin Gen plugin if you're creating characters and want a dedicated package for adding advanced texture maps. Here's a few more characters I've done since the release of Character Creator 3.3 in the Skin Gen plugin. This is Peter Alexander. Thank you very much for watching.